Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, today we're gonna to continue the tutorial series on the repurposing of the Haunted Mansion display. This is gonna be part five, and today we're going to paint the fences that we built in the previous video. I'm gonna take you step by step and show you how um, to paint them, what they're gonna look like when they're done, and so on, and I think you're gonna really like this. They turned out okay. I'm gonna show you, my fence is done. Right, so I completed my fence uh, for the, it needs a few little details, but not really many. I may weather it a little bit more. I've done some of that, but it may be, it may be done. I don't, I don't know. We're real close. If it's not, uh, if it's not done, it's got about 10 minutes worth of work and then it will be done. So with that, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take you off this tripod and give you a tour of where we're at on this repurposed display. I'm gonna show you the fence, I'm gonna show you how it looks and talk a little bit about it. Then we're gonna jump back up and I'm going to focus in somewhat close and we're going to paint that fence that we built last video. We're gonna paint it just like I painted the fence here and decorate it in a very similar fashion. So with that, let's uh, take a tour and see how this fence looks around this repurposed Haunted Mansion display. Okay, so here's the wide angle shot of the completed fence. Again, I'm about 99.9% .9 done with this fence. And, and again, today we're only focusing on the fence. We still need to put the grass in front of it and still need to detail around the rest of the display. But for the fence, that's what we're gonna be looking at and I think we're close to being done. So let's zoom in and take a look at the gate. First of all, let's look at the color uh, match or in this case, the color not match. That was really hard. I think it needs to be a little bit more red, um, but uh, you know, I just got tired of trying quite honestly and uh, color matching is clearly not my cup of tea, but I think from a distance and far back and at different angles, it looks it looks pretty good. So not, not too awful bad, honestly. So let's take a closer look and you can see sort of the detail now, look at the tops, right? So these little details of these leaves just add so much in the way of this fence. And so you've got some miscolored bricks down there with a little bit of, uh, you know, the little uh, moisture kind of, uh, you know, stains and things like that on the front edge of the bricks. You can see just a little bit, not too bad. Uh, but that's about the way I think the fence is supposed to look. I'm pretty pleased uh, overall with the way that it turned out. It, it does not look too bad. Uh, and again, from every angle, it looks fairly, fairly decent. Uh, I wished I could have got the color match a little bit better, but all in all, I'm pretty pleased with the way this fence turned out. Uh, I did put some leaves down here on this one. I may, you know, smatter some more around. Um, and that's why I say I'm 99.9% .9 done. I may put a few more there just to kind of give it that realistic effect. But I love, just absolutely love the way those fall leaves look laying on the top of those pillars. And you can see some of the moisture marks coming down there and some on the bricks. and. So I'm trying to be as detailed as possible, yet as realistic as possible with my time. And, you know, I don't I want to spend forever doing this. So all in all, I'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out. And I think once we get the grass in place around the front uh, and we get some other uh, things that I've got planned into this build, then I think we're going to be, uh, I think we're going to be pretty, pretty good and pretty happy uh, with the way it's turned out. So that's the fence. Uh, again, about 99.9% .9 done. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you uh, how to paint, paint a piece of this modular fence. So let's get that set up and I'll be right back. Okay, you can see that I'm set up here. Now this is the fence that we built um, during the last uh, video. And I told you I was going to spray paint it black uh, basically what I do is I take a, uh, a wooden skewer and I throw that through the bottom of it, something so I can basically hold it, something kind of like this with a skewer. And then I use the black spray paint at different angles to take it, uh, to paint it. I take the, the fence itself off 
because we don't need that. We're not gonna need it now either, so I'm just gonna toss it out of the way. And then I spray paint this all over just to make sure that it's good and coated. And then I let it sit out in the sun and dry, and it, uh, once it's done, then it's obviously ready to paint. And that's where we're, we're at now. So let's talk about brushes. So I always have a little cup of water just to soak my brushes in as I'm done with them. I always have paper towels so I can kind of blot the brushes off. I've got one brush that I'm gonna use for the main painting, and that's a, it's a brush. These are all cheap brushes. There's no, there's no, uh, I think these are top-notch brushes that you get at, um, at Joann's, but any brush will do. And I, I use a, a thicker, thicker brush for the main paint, okay? And so that'll, that'll be for the, the main paint. We're gonna mix that up. And then I use a smaller detail brush, something that I can get up into this area with here and, uh, and paint that without causing too much extra damage. Okay, so those, and then uh, a dry brush, you can either use a, a stiff brush, which this is a little more stiff. You can use a smaller stiff brush. Uh, there's various types that you can use. I'm gonna try it with these three for now, I believe. Okay, then we move on to paint. So in order to paint this fence to get it somewhat close to a brick color, I've decided that a, and I, I think I shared this with you on the last one, the nutmeg brown is a darker brown that I've elected to use. So I shake that up and get it ready to come out. I've got a barn red that uh, is sort of a, a darker rose, uh, rubyish kind of red. Uh, very vintage looking, and I like that. And then I've got a pumpkin, uh, and so that's what we're going to use uh, here. And so the pumpkin is just going to be mixed up and, and put in there to give it more of that orange uh, flavor. Then I've got two other paints over here. I've got a, a brown, and this is called, just called golden brown, and this is actually what I use to dry brush on top of this, really dry brush to change the entire color to a more, more of a brown. Maybe it should have been more of a red. We won't know because I'm not gonna redo it, but you could use the brown. You may be able to use the red. I may try the red just to see, but uh, more than likely we'll go with the brown. Uh, and then we've got a cream colored, uh, and this is called Natural Buff. Uh, it once it's on and dry, you see it on the top caps of uh, this up here, and it looks pretty antique looking. Uh, and then we will uh, dirty a lot of that up with some uh, gray. I didn't bring the gray out here. We could use black just to put a little bit of dirt and grime on that. And so I did have the black, and, and that's just another top notch type paint. And we can use a little bit of that, just a very little bit to dry brush and kind of dirty up some of the tops of that because once we're done with a white it's going to be unnaturally white so we need to dirty it up a little bit you can also do that with a wash okay so that's how we're going to get started we're going to put these paints away because we're not going to need them right now and we're going to get started with mixing our paint for the actual fence now I've done this before. Obviously, I painted the whole fence, and so if I were you, I would experiment on mixing just a little bit of paint to see exactly what color you want. I'm gonna mix, oh, I don't know, probably about that much brown, okay? I'm gonna take a little bit of red, and there's two, there's three drops of red. And then I'm gonna take the orange, I'm gonna put in three drops of orange. And we'll adjust as we get, uh, you know, kind of testing it out. But you just take this and start mixing it all together into this paste or this paint mixture. And, you know, it's not gonna hurt to dab your brush around to kind of get some of that stuff up on your brush. So just kind of make sure that you're thoroughly mixing this paint, because if this works, you're gonna to wanna to replicate this, especially if you've got a whole bunch to paint. Now, to me, that looks too brown, okay? 
So, and again, don't, don't trust me when it comes to color matching. You've seen that I don't color match very good. But I am going to take another couple of drops of orange and add that to the mix. And just kind of bring that up together and bring it all together and bring it all in. And you can test a little piece there. It's still pretty brown. So we can add a little more orange if we think we need it. Maybe just another drop or just, let's go two. That's a pretty big drop. And well, there's three. So hopefully that'll work. Okay, it's starting to turn the more appropriate color. Let's bring all of this back in. There's really no science to it. To me, there's not. I'm just mixing paints to what looks halfway decent, I think. Okay, so. Take a little bit of this paint and just, just kind of start at an angle and just kind of brush it on just about like that. This looks about like what I did last night. So now we're gonna let that dry and we're gonna come back and put uh, another coat on it. So that's, that's how we're looking so far. Uh, it, it gets better. So let's, let's uh, take a real quick break, let this dry and we'll be right back. Okay, that's probably dry enough. It's time for uh, coat number two. Okay, let's let that dry and we'll come back. Okay, let's put one more final coat onto this project. Okay, we're gonna let that dry and then we're going to start the dry brushing. Okay, so we're back in and this is dry. Before you dry brush anything on any project, you wanna make absolutely sure that this is incredibly dry. Now, I'm sure if I left it out there, it could be drier <laughs> and that would probably be better. But in the interest of this video and time, I think it's dry enough. The point is you want it incredibly dry before you dry brush uh, and I'll show you how we go about doing that. So we're gonna take now the golden brown, shake it up a little bit, and we're not, we don't need much of this paint, but we need enough to kind of get on our brush. So that's pl probably plenty. And then to dry brush, we're going to just kind of dab, and I'm talking, that's about what you're getting on the brush right now. And then you just start working that, and that's what you're looking for something like that. And then I always start on an inconspicuous area first and just start kind of going at it. Okay, so you can kind of see how that's looking and then we'll move to this side. And it takes a lot of dry brushing to get that paint to come off. You wanna try to get it up to the top bricks And now we're about out of 
out of paint. You can see it's running out, so we need a little bit more. Again, I'm always very, very cautious. Sometimes I'll start on the top, so you can't, you don't get a chance to see that very much up there. You can see how that's almost changing colors right in front of your eyes there. And that's what you're looking for. Okay, so that's about how it's gonna look. Now let's compare, now this is not fully dry yet, but if you see, it's very close in color, very close in color to what we just painted. So that's, that's the dry brushing to get it to change to that color, okay? So now we're gonna let this dry. This does not take very long to dry and we're gonna add, start adding the details up here. Okay, this is now dry enough. We've got uh, our uh, white. In this case, it's the natural buff color. Again, it, it does a real good job on this here. So we're gonna take, that's way too much. I don't know why I put that much out, but it is what it is. So we're gonna take that color. I'll make sure I get all this off my hands. Okay, we're gonna load our brush up pretty good. And we're gonna start right up here. And we're just gonna put that on really thick. Okay, that's the first coat. That's gonna require at least two more coats to get that uh, fully saturated. So we'll come back when the third coat, you've seen me do it once, you don't need to see me do it two, two more times. We'll come back to that when it's completely white. Okay, so this is now dry. There was two coats. I didn't put a third coat on because we're gonna just weather it up anyway. So there's two coats on it. But before we get rid of our white colored paint, we wanna add some little accents 
to the front of these bricks. And so the way we do that is the exact same way. We take just a little bit of paint, we wipe most of that off, and then we just go nice and slow right down the front of these. Now we don't have to hit every one, we can. If you wanna look like, uh, you know, it's coming, coming down from like moisture seeping out or, you know, mold or just old wear and tear. You can add as many or as few, and you can do this with any color. I'm just doing it with white, but you can kind of see how that streaks down just a little bit. You don't want to go overboard with it for sure. I, I think it looks worse if you do that, but that's how you do that. Okay. So then that will dry all by itself. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take just a little bit of black and I mean, just a little bit, just one drop or so. Clean our brush out. Okay, now we're gonna take a little bit of that black. And again, it's, these are black bristles, so it's real hard to see, but that's way, way too much. So, and now I'm just gonna drag it down the front of this. You can kind of see how that's starting to look a little worn. Just a little bit in that area there. Not much. Some up over here. Back here. And again, you could go crazy as detailed as you want to go uh, with this is fine. A little bit on the ball itself. So something like that is starting to look a little more weathered. Okay. So we're done with the paint. Now when we take our fence and we put our fence back on, that's what we're left looking with, or looking like, I guess, okay? So not bad. So now we wanna decorate it up with a little bit of the fall foliage on top. And uh, let me show you how to do that. I'll be right back. Okay, so this next piece is, uh, I think adds just all the flavor in the world to this to make it look even more realistic. And so this is from a company called Storm Creation. You can get these off of Amazon. Uh, so just type in storm creation and then look for fall foliage or anything like that. But this is a pack of uh, yellow and a pack of red. They, you can get green, all different kinds of colors. And so I got these a couple of years ago for a, a different project. And it, they work incredibly well. And I just uh, kind of open the bags and, and get them uh, ready. And we'll use just a little bit of these, not many at all. Just kind of get the bags ready for use. Okay, and then I'm gonna take Mod Podge. This is a very small container of Mod Podge, but you wanna get the matte finish, the matte finish. If you get a glossy finish or anything else, it's gonna shine like it's wet, like it's water. I don't like that. And so for this, I'm just gonna take a small little amount, just like that. Okay, take a, a paintbrush that you can use for uh, for glue, anything will work. And then I take quite a bit of glue and just start putting it up around the top, pretty thick. Okay, and then essentially I will set this down I'll take a pinch of yellow 
and just start, uh, I'm gonna do this so you can see as best as possible, just start sprinkling it around. Okay, that's good for a yellow, almost. A little bit of red. I kind of pat it just a little bit, not much, and then tap any excess off. And now you've got some fall foliage around the top of that. Uh, you could cer or certainly put more here if you want, just another drop of Mod Podge and, and some of the rest. But that's really about how that fence is going to look when it's done. And if you look at one here, they look pretty close to being identical. Not a whole lot of, not a whole lot of difference, even in the colors of paint or technique or anything else really. So that's, that's how you go about building that fence. And hopefully uh, this helps you uh, and uh, gives you the inspiration to go build a, go build a fence. Okay, well, like I said, hopefully that inspired you to build your own fence. These are pretty simple to build. They look incredibly good, I think. Not too bad. The color is not, you know, perfect, but it's, if, if you didn't have anything to compare it to, this would be a perfect looking fence. You could make it a little more red, it would be a perfect looking fence. You could make it a little more orange, it'd be a perfect looking fence. The point is, whatever you make, as long as it's all consistent and it all looks the same, it's gonna look good no matter what you do. So. Uh, hopefully that helps. It's a pretty simple process. It's uh, time consuming and the details matter. Uh, if I were to have taken my time even more with the carving of the brickwork with the uh, hot wire tool or the wood carving tool, it would look absolutely better than it does currently. But sometimes it's the you, you can get so carried away in those little details that you lose yourself and then it takes you weeks or months to complete something that took me honestly six or eight hours total to to finally get done uh and so you there's trade-offs for that but you guys will figure that out uh for your own projects hopefully that will help you again to go out and, and look at trying to build a fence uh, so there's a couple more things i want to talk about on the haunted mansion display and what's coming next so the next step that I think I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove all of that fence, I'm gonna remove all of the decorations, and I'm gonna glue the top base onto the large base. Uh, once that is done, uh, and I'll likely do that off camera, I'm gonna to go through with a white PVA glue and go around the edges of the top base once it's glued down and put the uh, the moss or the grass. And so you guys have seen me do that. There's no difference. I don't need to, to do that on video again. It's just time consuming and it makes a mess. So uh, the next time you see it, it'll be glued down and all of that grass will be around at least the top edge of the base. Then we've got to do the, the grass around the other edge of the base. I'll probably likely do that one on video perhaps and, and get that one uh, knocked out. That'll be next. And also uh, there's a different thing that I'm working on. So I told you the last time that I, this was the uh, the little mausoleum that I had for the Haunted Mansion when we first started. And I, I mean, I built the Haunted Mansion display uh, over two years ago, I think. Uh, I built it specifically for the Haunted Mansion uh, Department 56 piece that came out. Um, and that was the only piece that there were, uh, that and the Haunted, the uh, Hitchhiking Ghosts were available. But I made this little crypt because I wanted it to have, you know, somewhat representative of the little crypts behind the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. Uh, and you can see that you know, we've got some silly names on. I mean, we're, my whole family's on there to include the, the dogs uh, at the bottom. So I decided that I wanted to redo this and, and put it out uh, in behind the, uh, the hitchhiking ghost on the display. But I, I figured this time I've grown a little bit in my uh, abilities and skills, I think, as a crafter. And so this is what I'm going for. I think I wanna try to do this look. And so again, a no tutorial on this, 
uh, because I kind of did most of it already just on a whim, but this is the new improved Crip, okay? So this is it painted black. Uh, you can kind of see uh, how it's gonna start to come together. It's not identical, but it's close. Um, and so this will be sitting behind the, the ghost. This obviously still needs to be painted. It's gonna have a row of bricks. It's gonna look pretty close to this, hopefully, paint job. You know how I am with color matching. But so that's done, that's gonna go in the back. And then uh, the final shot out of here, I'll show you what that looks like set up against uh, the backdrop of the Haunted Mansion. And so you can kind of see how that's gonna come together as well. So that'll be painted here in the next uh, few days and, and then placed into that display when it's, when it's all said and done. And then the last step for this display is we've got to run some LED lighting, wire that up to illuminate the haunted hearse and to illuminate the hitchhiking ghost. At least I think that's what we're going to do. I know for sure the haunted hearse is going to be illuminated. So we've got to get that done. I'll do a tutorial on how to do that as we go through and do it together. So you got that to look forward to. So this, this is going to close out five. So I'm talking probably six or seven will be the final one. And we'll finish this one up and move on to uh, the trick or treat lane, which is going to be another, uh, you know, a lot of work to get that one done because I'm trying to make everything now more detailed and more realistic looking. So it just takes a little bit longer and a little more thought process. So, Hey, like always, if you've liked this video though, make sure that you click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. It helps the channel to grow, helps me out personally. And I appreciate every single subscriber and it keeps me motivated to keep throwing out videos like this and trying to get our community to, uh, to build better. So with that, take care of yourselves. We'll talk to you again real soon.